Okay, from the next, the next question, which came to us from Australia, uh, they say, I found your program on YouTube, and this is how I started to follow you due to the time difference. I love the program. Love you and Dr. Doreen. I'm so grateful to you guys. Uh, and then they get to their question. My boy, and thank you for that, and we love you too. My boy is three years and two months. I do ABA at home 20 hours a week. The only ABA therapist of the state lives on a, a different city, so we arrange to do clinic on Skype, and she then sends me the new programs. I'm exhausted. And, in fi and finding difficult to keep my son interested in rewards. The only things that are effectively work to make him work throughout the session without running away are food and YouTube videos. So I take the phone back in, back in between programs. The therapist said that the videos could make him uninterested in anything else at all. I'm trying to avoid uh, to work with the phone, but it's, it's hard even to get him to sit voluntarily without it. any advice on how to keep him engaged on ABA. And is it bad to use videos sometimes? And she says, thanks. Uh, I love, love this question um, because it's something that a lot of families are facing. But first of all, if this mom is actually running ABA programs, kudos, that's really hard to do. Sounds like she's doing a lot with some remote support possibly um, but I love this question because there's so many it's not just kids with autism it's kids today that they're really hooked on these electronic games and videos and there's a lot of parents I think that are struggling with you know how healthy is this right um, but kids with autism seem to get a little extra hooked right um, so some families are actually deciding to go just electronic free um, and then some are letting them have lots of access and some trying to limit it. But I know that it's a really big, big struggle. Um, I think of my own, I always think back to my own son where we use video games um, as reinforcers and there's times where I think if I could time travel back, I might have really eliminated those um, because they became such an obsession. And we had so many programs and behavior plans around video game behavior. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to like give the best answer because it's um, it's really family specific. You could decide to go electronic free. A lot of people are advocating for that, especially for people with autism, because they're so when you have your face in a screen, you're not interacting with the environment and people, and it can become very obsessive. Um, and then other people are just really limiting them to just when you earn them. So. I think if you do keep electronics in his life, then you should limit them and only use them as rewards during the program. I think you have to be very careful, just like any parent, um, even if they don't have autism, of using videos and um, games to keep them quiet and, and behaved. We don't want them to have to have that in order to behave. They should be able to have free time without them and be able to have appropriate behavior. We want to teach that. You have to be really careful with them and make sure that they're earning them. Um, I would definitely talk with your current, um, it sounds like there might be an ABA consultant in there, I couldn't tell from the question, but, um, or therapist to come up with some ideas how to eliminate them or to limit the use of them. Um, and possibly not just using them for skill building where you come down and sit down and just work and then you get your videos um, or YouTube but you actually have to have appropriate behavior during downtime and learn how to have leisure time without them. Learn how to um, have appropriate behavior without a video game or YouTube in your hands. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Absolutely. So I could go on and on about this one and around and around because it really is an issue that I think all parents are dealing with right now. I think it's really hard when parents write in and they go, well, there's only this or, or these two things that are reinforcing to my child because then this becomes this cycle that, you know, uh, that now we're trapped in. And, and that idea of, well, we're going to teach something else to the child that right now isn't reinforcing, but will be a reinforcing to them later on because it ends up that these are the same families often that say, oh, I don't want you to teach play skills. I, I want you to just, I want him to speak and I want him to be able to read, right? But the reason why we need to teach play skills is so that eventually they find that reinforcing so that you can have them do something else. So, 
Um, I, I think it would yeah. be interesting to look at what else needs to be taught to him so that he knows how to have leisure time without those things. It would be exactly. tough at first. And the one, one thing that I think is really important to remember, because even my own son, he is older, video games weren't always around and um, was working with um, children for so long, even when I started as a therapist myself, uh, like a, a tutor myself, um, we didn't have electronics and we didn't have YouTube and people didn't have the fancy phones. And if you think about it, if you take all that stuff away, there will be other reinforcers. Other things will become powerful. Yeah, um, absolutely. So I think people get afraid to take them away because they're so powerful, but if they did disappear, it's human nature, they'll find something else. Absolutely. Thanks for watching Autism Live. To subscribe, click here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.